liberty, God, that we may sit at your dining table this night and feast of your word. God, may your word give us the nourishment, spiritually speaking, to our souls, our body, and our spirit. God, that we would be ignited, renewed, regenerated, to go forth to share the good news to those that need to hear from you. God, let our light so shine before men that they may glorify our Father which is in heaven. So God, we thank you. Bless Rabbi this evening. God, use him in a great and in a mighty way, Father. God, I know he is already excited, God. Not, oh God, I see him so excited that one of God, just share the word with us tonight, God. We thank you for just allowing us to gather here, God. If there's anyone coming, God, just bring them here all safely, God. God, we thank you. We praise you. We commit this evening to you. In Yeshua's mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Rabbi. Well, good evening. And um, Baruch Hashem, and God is so good to watch over us during these days, and we can once again gather together to learn from his word. And uh, this evening, we're going to be uh, learning about one of the most important, uh, they're all amazing letters, but the the letter, uh, the 11th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And this amazing Hebrew letter is called Kaf. Yeah, the 11th letter, K-A-F. In, uh, in the Hebrew letter Kaf, we learn uh, the power to actualize our potential. Every one of us has potential. And um, so we're going to learn a little bit about this uh, God's way for us to actualize this, this potential. The 11th letter, uh, and in the numerical value, it's number 20. And this letter is about calculating a cal uh, calculating system, a system which calculates the value, Gemetra, is a system that calculates the value of a letter. In Luke chapter 6, verse 30, 38, it says, give and you shall be given, or give and you will receive gifts. The full measure, it says. So when you give, you're going to get the full measure back. Yes. And that full measure is not going to be loose because it says it's going to be compacted. And it's going to be shaken together and overflowing. This is where this letter cough comes in so that we may actually actualize the power of our potential because God offers us so much when we are not in the taking end but the giving end shaken together and overflowing will be put right in your lap says the Lord and it continues on it says for the measure which with which you measure out will be used to measure, or the word here is calculate, back to you. So whatever you're getting is only because that's what you put in. If you put in very little, it's, it's going to be calculated to get, give you right back the same amount that you have put in. So it behooves us to put in as much as we can. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with how much? All. all. See, when you, when you put your all in there, then 
all of that is going to be measured and calculated as to the different types of gifts that God will return back to you. You put in a little bit, you're not going to get very much back. So every day, heaven is calculating. Because we, we, we start a brand new day that never existed. This day did never existed. God had to create it. This is the day what? The Lord yeah, because it didn't exist before. So it exists, and there's blessings, there's things that we can do today, because every day heaven is calculating, is calculating what gifts you are to receive according to what? To what you have done. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about sitting back and asking God, give me, give me, give me, give me. Because he can't give you, he can only give you what you put in. And what you do put in, it's pressed down and shaken over. I mean, it's flowing all over the place. So, you know, if you put a little bit, that's not too much flowing. Now, within uh, the very earliest uh, Jewish traditions, there was a group of scholars that got together, and they began to, 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 began to notice that there is, uh, in, in the Word of God, that they began to count the numbers of times that certain words were being used and, and letters that were coming up, the sequences uh, that appeared in Scripture, numbers and verses and paragraphs. And these uh, textual specialists, you might call them, they, they actually had a name because they were the ones that were there to protect the integrity of the Word of God. They're called soferims. Soferim means counters or calculators. We just read the scripture here that, that there's going to be some calculating that comes back to you. And, and these Torah scholars, they, they were calculators or they were uh, counters that counted. The seferims ensured that every Torah scroll that was being made brand new. Every Torah scroll had the, the correct, without no error. They were identical to the previous one, to the original one. And if there was one letter that was out of place, then it was not considered kosher. Mm -hmm. So it had to be identical, noting uh, any unusual words and spellings and, and maybe uh, rep replicating, maybe, you know, ins instead of uh, putting one the, they put a double the by mistake. And so these sephirines, they, they inspected the Bible to ensure this was centuries back, from ancient times, to ensure that future generations would have the word of God unblemished. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have. After they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, well, they were pretty close to what we have today. Yeah. So I, I wanted to put that there because uh, we're going to get into some of the some of the numbers there. So I want you to go back and look at the the handout because. Uh, there is the, um, this amazing letter, Kof, and it's in the form of um, a hand, because Kof means hand. The letter prior to Kof was, is, was the letter U. That's why I handed you a new copy of the Hebrew alphabet. So what is the, the previous letter? Yud. And um, yud means um, hand, hand, that's yud, where you write with or you point or you say, let's go. That's a hand. And uh, because the Torah um, is so important, they use a, a little finger hand to point rather than 
use your hand that's greasy and stain it, right? So yud is hand, but the, the next letter, which is the one we have tonight, is kaf. It it's act, actually means palm. So you, uh, if you go like this, you know, like this is the palm, the palm of your hand. And so if you, if you put it this way, the palm now becomes a crown. So I want to talk about that so we can see how, uh, what we can learn from this. The letter cough comes after the youth, means really palm. And as you can see, it, it comes in the form of a cupped, a cubed, a cubed, you might say, or a cupped hand. It's on this side. And when that, that hand is turned upside down, what does it look like now? A crown. In Hebrew, the crown is called a kitar. K-E-T-H-E-R, the kitar. It, and it, that crown or kitar begins with the letter kaf, K-A-F. The kaf represents, um, because it's the kitar, and in the tree of life, the kitar is, 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 the, is way up the top. It represents God. So you have the kitar, you have the binai, and you have the chokmah. The chokmah is, uh, rep uh, Yeshua represents the chokmah, and the Holy Spirit represents the binai. So Yeshua is the, the wisdoms of God that is all-knowing, all powerful, all knowledgeable, and the Holy Spirit gives us understanding of the wisdoms that Yeshua gives us. So the cough represents now, represents supernatural potential when you turn it this way. All right? This way. It's, it's, a, it's just a regular cough, but when you turn it this way, it becomes a crown. The crown on the head. For example, I have a kippah, right? This kippah uh, represents that I am lower than God. I'm, I'm not at his level, but I'm lower than God. But yet the same kippah that I have represents what's in the head. So the... the the cough represents, again, supernatural potential. And it's this way, like this kippa, that represents what is inside. What's inside represents what's in the head, and that's intellect. The intellect, the cough, is the potential that we have and so, therefore, in Hebrew, the word for potential is K-O-A-F, ko'af, ko'af. That's a really important word, ko'af, potential or power. So, let me go back and, and, and mention once again that, that we all have potential, meaning that we all have power. And the Lord says, I give you power. It's not just power, like the kind of power that we desire to cast out devils and move mountains, but it's actually the potential that we have to do great and mighty things. Amen. Kof. It begins with the letter Kof. This word K-O-A-F. Because cough is the letter of what? Potential. So the cough with its cup hand and form of a crown is about potential and receiving. And one of the meanings of cough is also to suppress. This is really important. Every person that wants to use their potential must also suppress 
Many times when we want to bring out our potential, we have to suppress other things, other forces. For example, um, you cannot use your potential unless you suppress y your, your drive. We have, we, we have certain drives, certain desires. Those drives or those desires need to be suppressed. So this is the other side of the workings of a cough. Because if you have potential, then you must also have the ability to suppress. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You have potential. It means you have power. But you cannot use it unless you suppress your, your, your natural drives. If you don't suppress them, if you don't control them, if you don't bring them under subjection, then your spiritual potential cannot rise. So we, we need to suppress those forces of nature that are around us, that challenge us, that take our time. Okay, are there some things that take your time? That you should be using it for the Lord? The, those are things that we need to suppress. We, we don't just give in to it because the phone rang and now they want you to go in this direction. Or, or they're calling you and they're just wanting to take your time and, and you're wanting to hang up and they want to keep talking. So when you learn to suppress, you discern it right away and you know who's calling and you know who are the long talkers. Huh? But if you do not practice in suppressing, you, you're there just kind of, oh, when... when and, and you don't take no action. But you, you'll never be able to really actualize your potential, the power that's, that's laying inside of us until we suppress those drives, we suppress those uh, forces of nature that are around us, they're challenging us to take our time and to sap our energy that we could be using to build the kingdom, to, to build our family. Mm -hmm. So at the level of our soul, we have our soul level. At that level, we need to suppress our evil inclination. Our spirit is no, no problem. Our spirit doesn't go to sleep when, when our body goes to sleep. It could stay connected with God but it's that soul part of us. And that soul part of us, again, need, we need to suppress the inclinations of that soul at the level that we use the authority that God has given us to bring every thought to captivity, to the obedience of Messiah. All right, so if we don't do this, uh, after a while, even though you might be a believer for a long time, you'll begin to, to feel like you're, you're not that close to God. Why, why do you feel that you're not that close to God? Well, you know, I just, I'm not giving the time that I'm supposed to give. See, if you don't give quality time to the Lord, you're going to start feeling in that that kind of a way. And, and folks, this is why we need to suppress those feelings. In a sense, we have to suppress uh, and bring into captivity those feelings uh, of, of feeling distant from the Lord. Have you ever felt, you know, where's God where I need him? Or I, I, I don't feel that close to the Lord that, like I should be. The, that is not the spirit in you. You need to suppress those thoughts and you need to suppress those feelings because if you don't, they will always be right there.
The Hebrew letter Kaf is the letter for the power to actualize potential. What, it, what am I talking about? First of all, the two letters of the, uh, of the full spelling of Kaf in Hebrew are, are the initial letters of, of the two Hebrew words Koch, K-O-A-C-H. That word means potential in Hebrew. And another uh, word is, is write it down, P-O-E-L, P-O, Poel, has the, the word God in it. Poel means actual. So Koach, Koach means potential, and Poel means what? Actual. Mm-hmm. So, thus, the, the, the cough, the cough is hinting something here. It's hinting at the power that is latent within the spiritual realm of the potential to fully manifest itself in the physical realm of the actual. Okay, I have to explain that a little better. The two letters of the full spelling of Kof, there's two letters that spell Kof in Hebrew. And those letters are are the initial letters of the two Hebrew words, um, Kof, potential, and Poel for actual. According to Psalms 118, verse 24, it, this psalm says, this is the day that the Lord has made. So um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm bringing the scripture up again. If it says this is the day that the Lord has made, that means that, that God must create the world continuously. He didn't just um, make the world in such a way that it exists already tomorrow because tomorrow's not here. What, hap what would happen if, if everything ended today? We wouldn't have a tomorrow. So God must create the world continuously, otherwise creation would instantly stop. So God's potential is therefore actualized at each moment. So your potential, my potential, should be actualizing itself every moment. In other words, um, today is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. So in this day, whatever we do, if it's up here, we need to actualize it. Now, when did God think about us? before the foundation of the world, right? You were not, and I were not actualized yet. Okay, so now we're here, and we've been actualized. We've been created in his image, in his, and in his likeness. So, so at the right moment is when we came into being. We, we became actualized. Now, we, we get up every day, and we're not doing too much actualizing. We have dreams about doing this and dreams about doing that, and, um, and I want to go here, and I want to go there, but we don't actualize that. Actualizing means that, that we actually make it happen.
This is why many people, when, when they, wake, they, they wake up in the morning, they say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because, mm-hmm. We're, we're in effect saying that we're going to move forward and actualize the things that we plan to do on this particular day. All right, now since the literal meaning of the letter cough is palm, the place in the body where potential is, is mostly actualized, this awareness is reflected in the custom of placing palm on palm upon waking up in the morning. So when the Jewish people wake up in the morning, many Christians wake up in the morning and, and they do their la daily prayer, they, they, they kind of do a palm upon palms, which means what? Put your hands like this, now, the other one as well. Now, bring them together. That's palm upon palm. So, if you do it this way, you know, like this, then, you, you know, you're praying, right? Yeah. Palm upon palm, you're praying. Placing the palm upon palm is also an act or is a sign of subjugation. Subjugation, similar to the act of bowing before a king. In places like Oriental places or Japan or China, they, they, they bow like, they put their, their hands like this. That's subjugation. And placing the palm together, palm upon palm, one, in, one enters into a state of supplication. And prayer to God, the king of the universe, to reveal new, uh, new ideas to us, his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So cough is also the root word for kippa. That's the root word for it. It's also called yarmika or, yeah. In reference to the creation of man, it is said, you have placed your palm, that's the cough, over me. So it's like this, he places his hand over you. you uh, bishop or pastor pray of people, they put their hands in, they're putting their palms, right? That's the cough. You, you place your cough upon me. So this is the, the you're placing what upon them? And, and what is that palm again? Potential. Power. And many times we, we say, uh, we, Release the power of God in you. May God's potential, you know, rise in you. The palm. So you, you have placed your palm, your, your hand over me. So our sages, our, our, our teachers from the past, uh, they refer to Adam as the formation of the palms. So as a verb, this uh, word, uh, this letter, cough, means to subdue. And we are told in, in our teachings that he suspended the, the mountains over them um, as a barrel. It explains that the divine motivation manifest in this act of God putting his hand 
uh, over his people, a canopy. Um, he was also subduing them. They become uh, his, his family, his, his chosen people. Psalms 118, this is the day that the Lord has made again. And so the Lord has done it in this very day. If, if this is the day that the Lord has made, he has done it this very day. And so we rise up in the morning to do the same thing. As the Father sent me, so send I you to rise up in the morning again and so that we may do as the Lord did. The Lord has done it this very day. So we must also do the same because we have the potential and we have the power. So, so I think that this letter speaks to us about um, surrendering, subjugation. We're surrendering to the ultimate authority and the one that has the, the, the ultimate potential to create the heavenlies, to, to see to it that the, we would be here in our time. And so we must imitate, we are imitators of him. We're made in his image and in his likeness. So what is the uh, numerical value of this letter? T 20. Interesting that this uh, number 20 is the same value for the word yod, which is hen. So the palm has the same value as, as the hand. Yod, so there's 20, it has the same value, twice the value. Um, okay, so you have, what, what's the significance this, what I want to say? What is the significance of this numerical value? Well, 20 actually is um, when you, you have to break it down starting from, from five. Four times five is what? 20. So if the potential that you have is, is one five, five. That's, this is the, the level of potential five. When, when you reach the level where you've suppressed everything that needs to be suppressed, it jumps from five to 20. Yeah. And um, as, as you know, I've, I've shared with you that, that I happen to have seven fives uh, in my life. I was born on the fifth day and on the fifth month. And then I, I have um, five more because I, most of those are in my social security number. So five in my life is very significant. When I come across a five, you know, in, in scripture, I, I know that it has to do with potential. It has to do with power. This is why I've learned to, to suppress those things that need to be suppressed. And, and one of the areas where I, I've become pretty effective in, in suppressing is the negativeness. Because negativeness is so easy to become negative because we, we have a world that is not on accentua accentuating the positive things. We don't like what the left is doing. We don't like what Congress is. We don't like what the president, we don't like what the Senate is doing. It's easy to get caught up. We don't like what, what the elite media is doing. What I've learned is to suppress that so that that kind of news does not 
govern me. That I could still use my potential to the fullest, not just barely, but the maximum possible. So if there's people in your life that, that are s suppressing you, uh, they're taking your time, please, you know, rise and shine for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So if you're like the letter cough, you have spiritual focus. Once you suppress things, you have spiritual focus. You have constant concentration. And how can you not have that kind of focus and, and that kind of concentration? Because the next letter, next to, to the letter Kof, is the letter Lamet. And the letter Lamet is, is, is the letter that is the, it, it goes above the line. If you look, if you look at uh, the Lamet in, in the chart that you have there, you, you see it kind of shooting right up. It shoots above the line where all the other letters are formed. That means that you're right next to becoming the top. Prior to this, you must suppress everything that needs to be suppressed so that you can become a Lamet next. Everyone else is going to be at uh, another level, not everyone else, but you know, many will be at the lower level, but you are you're shooting up into the upper yud, if, okay? With the highest, the, you know, um, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You, you rise higher than you've ever have risen, right after you fulfilled, and you're working, and you're completing, and, 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 and you, you're not allowing the negative to take the best of you. We, we must, folks, make assessment, evaluations, introspection. When, when we find ourselves, um, you know, thinking negative and then thinking that certain things are taking place uh, and it must be because uh, I'm not doing something right, that you have to suppress. Because that's what the enemy wants you to keep thinking. What does the Lord say about the righteous? He directs the steps of the righteous. And a cough person is already righteous. It's able, it, it, it comes from the yud, and it has become a cough so that you can now use the potential. It's like uh, you have a hand without the fingers or the palms. Before you had the hand, but if, what about if, if it gets cut off right here? You're cutting off the cuff, the palm, the hand, the potential, the power. But now that you are a cuff, you, you have the hand of the youth and you have the potential, you have the power. You, you, can, you can suppress, you can bring every thought to captivity. Don't entertain those thoughts. If you entertain those thoughts, you may be entertaining other people in those thoughts. That maybe I'm, I'm, I'm in this condition because of so and so. And pretty soon so and so, you're distancing yourself from this person or that person. Hello? Yeah. And, and we cannot afford to do this because we're familia, we're family. A mishpacha. We must do everything to, to stay together. We, there's not enough of us. If there was, you know, every church, would, every synagogue would be, pa would be packed. So in order to conserve what we have, those of us that that can grow and can understand. We're growing from yud 
to cough and, and pretty soon to lamb it. And maybe you're not quite a lamb yet, but there's a lamb next to you. There are people that God has already raised to become a lamb. They have overcome. All right. So if you're a cough with a with a um, your cough with potential and you're using that potential, then truly scriptures that you've always wanted to embrace, you'll be able to embrace them and actually uh, walk in them. I can do all things through Messiah that strengthens me. And, and it's no longer just saying them, it's actually actualizing because it's, cough is about actu actualization, actualizing your potential. Did uh, Joshua actualize his potential? Uh, what did he do? He affected the natural, right? And how, how, how far did he affect the natural? Over 250,000 miles away. The, moon, the sun, the moon's about 250,000 miles away, and the sun is much further. <laughs> and yet, they both heard him. His words traveled instantly, and the sun and the moon stood still. He was, what, actualizing his potential. Now, I don't think that God is going to ask you to, to work on other planets, okay? Okay, work, work on yourself, work on your neighbor, work on your family. Utilize your, your entire full potential. Actualize it. Don't just go around saying, I have potential. Don't even say that to your kids without going to the next step. You know, son, you have so much potential. I do? Yeah. Well, he needs to know how to actualize that potential. You can become anything and everything that you, you want to be. And, and if you like to, I would like to help you become that. I, I would like to help you actualize that potential. This is what cough is about. Okay, so, um, so we, we need to br bring our soul part of it. Remember, I mentioned the soul part, right? And the soul part of you is like having a twin. And, and uh, it could be disastrous if you let your twin call the shots. And that's exactly what we've been allowing to happen. When God says to bring every thought into captivity, those thoughts are in the soulish part of us. And we're letting that twin that could fake everything, could fake um, crying, what do they call it? Uh, alligator tears, you know. I'm crying before God, but it's not deep and sincere. Don't let your twin call the shots because the twin is in the lower yud. Remember the, the letter Aleph, right? The upper yud and the lower yud. And you are past that as a cough. Once you reach the cough level, you're using your potential and you've already crossed that, that, uh, that uh, vav that, that separates the upper and the lower, right? And you're getting ready to shoot up pretty soon because you're going to become a, a, a lamet. And yet, we're listening to someone that is in the lower level, your, your twin. Uh -huh. Say, no way. no way. No, we're not going to listen to that.
Because the lower nature, in the lower nature, you become uh, what I think James describes. James describes um, a person that's in the lower level nature as a person that is double, double what? Double-minded. Double-minded person. And a double-minded person is a loser because the word of God says, think not that they will receive anything. You're listening to your lower nature. You're not going to get nowhere. You can't use your potential. You make a promise one day, and the next day you break it. I'll be there. I'll be there, Pastor. And Pastor's waiting. They still haven't walked through the door. <laughs> yeah. So when you reach the, the cough, this level, a level of the cough letter, we learn God's way and we learn it through relationships between God and us. This is a relationship now. He's, he is going to entrust you with actualizing your potential. Something that the world needs out there. That during the time of the apostles, they even wanted to buy it, right? The gifts of the Spirit. The miracles. So this is the level of a personal and intimate relationship. And this is the level that you've been looking to enter into. And oftentimes you think that you have to go through this process in order to, to get to this level. And yes, we do go through a, a process. I once was a child and... I talk like a child, but now that I'm a, a grown man, you're a grown woman, you no longer act and talk and play like a child. So there's a process of growing and learning to, be, to become a mature person. Listen, but that doesn't mean you have to go through the whole process before God can use you. That's a an important process of growing, but if, even if you're still a babe, God will speak through the mouth of babes. Why would God speak through the mouth of babes? Because he looked for a grown man, a grown woman to stand in the gap, and he found none. So, don't make excuses that you first have to go through all of this. No, just be sincere. Just be honest. Be growing. Be learning. And God will use you because you'll be about your father's what? And he was only 12 years old when he said those words. Are you, are, you, are you 12 years old? Um, I don't think I'm talking to too many 12 years olds. All right. So in closing here, there's a... A blessing that the Jewish people always say every Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light the candles of Shabbat. Yeah. And when there's not a woman to, to do it, then the man does it. it at home, this is where it mostly is done. Barukata donai lehenu menlik haolam, ashir kitsanu bet misputab vet suvanu what? Nir shil shabbat. Okay, so we welcome, we're wel we welcome his commandments. 
We welcome what he wants us to do. And that's what a cough does because he has a personal relationship. You don't shy away from, from the Lord. The, the, the people of God accepted the Torah and they accepted it with gladness. They accepted the commandments with gladness. It was affirmed in Mount Sinai, we will do and we will hear, Exodus 19, 8. And they accepted the Torah even prior, even prior to knowing the specifics of it. And I think that that is what God is looking for us. He's just, he's just looking for us to be a willing vessel and willing to, to hear what he says and willing to do it. So I hope that this study was um, helpful to you uh, and that you truly can become a person today, not tomorrow. You've been around in the, the things of God for a long time, that you become today a cough. You become a person that is utilizing or actualizing your potential. It's there already, You're ready to be released in you. Amen. And all of God's people say amen. amen. Let us pray together. Abba Father, I just want to thank you for all of the brand new to you to have that kind of personal relationship such glorious relationship that is so that they may be actualizing the potential that's inside of them starting right now this very moment this is the day that the Lord has made and why should I rejoice and be glad in it not because you made a new day, but because we are going to actualize the, the potential in us in this day that you actualize this day for us that never existed before so that we may become what you called us to be so that the next step when we become a Lamed, we could just, shoo, Lord, rise yeah. to the highest level possible. And nothing, Lord, shall separate us at that point. Not angels in heaven or in earth below. No, not father, not mother, not sister, not brother shall separate us, Lord, from that place of your divine, glorious love. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us by your hand like you did Ezekiel one step at a time until he reached that point, Lord, where his feet had to let go from the ground and allowed the Holy Spirit to just take him the rest of the way. He went, Lord, from small little fishes to amazing, great, big, huge blessings. And that is the destiny for every cough, Lord, for everyone that reaches this level where they're actualizing their potential. Father, bless them in such a way that you will put a hedge of, of thorns, of fire, of protection around them so that nothing whatsoever will distract them and give them, and, and yes, Give this congregation many coughs, Lord, many people with yeah. tremendous potential. We praise you and thank you in Yeshua's mighty, powerful name. Amen. amen. And amen.